Hello and welcome to the next session of metal corrosion and its control. In the last session we have seen what is corrosion, what is its mechanism, how corrosion takes place on different metals and uh, what are the different types of corrosion taking place. Let us have a uh, revision over uh, what are the what is corrosion. We have seen that uh, corrosion occurs on a metal which is called as reducing agent or reductant and another one which accepts electron is oxidant or oxidizing agent. What happens this oxidizing agent oxidizes the reducing agent or reductant by the loss of electrons and therefore it is called as oxidized. The reducing agent is oxidized. The electrons which are released is transferred to oxidizing agent thus oxidant is reduced and by gaining of electron it is reduced. This we have seen in the last uh, session. We have seen different types of uh, corrosions. One was dry or chemical corrosion and another was wet and immersed corrosion. Let us see what is the difference between the two types of corrosion. Dry, it occurs in dry condition that is in absence of moisture and wet occurs in presence of moisture or any electrolyte medium. The dry corrosion is due to the direct chemical attack of metal by the environment whereas wet corrosion is due to the formation of anodic and cathodic areas. In case of dry or chemical corrosion, the product accumulate at the place of corrosion whereas in wet or immersed corrosion, the product accumulates where the products are formed elsewhere. Then secondly, in dry corrosion, the it uh, it is ad, it absorb adopts adsorption mechanism whereas wet corrosion follows electrochemical reaction we have seen the examples of iron surface corrosion of iron surface in dry corrosion that is in absence of moisture and another one was rusting of iron the corrosion mechanism depends upon the galvanic series of metal in this galvanic series the metals are arranged with respect to the uh, to their reactivity reactivity in the sense the last orbit electrons, May unpaired electrons, if unpaired electrons are present, number of unpaired electrons in the last orbit uh, leads to the reactivity of the metals. Any one of the metals and alloy listed in this galvanic series, left side, will theoretically corrode while offering protection to any other metal or alloy and the lower, uh, listed, lo uh, lower listed elements in this series are electrically connected. In actual practice, however, zinc, if we see in this, is the most effective or reactive element. So let us start or let us see what are the different preventive measures to control corrosion. As we all know that corrosion involves reaction of metallic material with its environment and, it's a, and it is a natural process. The metal corrosion can be managed or slowed or even st stopped to some extent by using proper techniques depending on the circumstances of the metal being corroded. Let us see what are the different um, methods to prevent corrosion. First one modification of environment means we can uh, change the type of environment in which the metal is present. Second the modification in the properties of metal. Third use of protective coatings. Fourth cathode protection. Fifth, modification of design and choice of material. Let us all this. Uh, let us see all these preventive measures one by one. The first one, modification of environment. This modification of environment consists of reducing or eliminating the corrosive agents. Basically, in this process, the inhibitors, pH modifiers, are used to modify the environment. The first method in the mo modification of environment is dehumidification. Dehumidification secondly we can use different types of inhibitors. Inhibitors are of different types such as anodic inhibitor, cathodic inhibitor, organic inhibitor, adsorption type, vapor phase or volatile inhibitor. In dehumidification process, now corrosion process as we know that consists of two partial reaction that is uh, oxidation reaction which is which occurs at anode where metal dissolves into elect, 
ions and electrons and at cathode reduction reaction takes place. So, in dehumidification process what happens it reduces the moisture content in the air by condensing the amount of water or moisture with the help of either with hygroscopic substance or by developing the humidification system as shown in this figure. In this figure the wet the uh, in this process sorption rotation uh, rotor is uh, uh, developed where the uh, dry air is taken inside and the moisture is then discharged from the outlet. In between these two the char moves from anode to cathode through an electrolyte or any conducting medium. This is the setup of dehumidification uh, unit where there is a inlet for fresh air intake and another moisture laden air discharge. Second, de in dehumidification uh, process uh, system are developed to produce where reducing temperature to dry air, solvents to dry air and using compression to dry air. Secondly, we have seen we can use the corrosion inhibitors. Corrosion inhibitors are a chemical substance which when added to a corrosive or aqueous environment, it reduces the rate of corrosion by adsorption as a thin film, inducing formation of thick corrosion product, forming a passive film on the metal surface. Now, if corrosion is due to the formation of an galvanic or electrochemical cell, then in this solution the inhibitor tries to retard the corrosion by increased polarization of anode or cathode. Secondly, by increasing the electrical resistance of the electrolyte. The inhibitors can be inorganic or organic substance. There are many types of inhibitors with different mode of action. First one anodic inhibitor. Anodic inhibitor forms a protective layer and adsorbs on the metal surface by forming a barrier. It is used to repair crack or oxide film. It also prevents spitting corrosion and porous oxide film. The substance which are used as anodic inhibitors are some chromates, phosphate, tungstens, nitrate, molybdate, etc. The anodic inhibitor are used to uh, uh, used in this way as shown in the example. If there is an iron surface on the left hand side there is a, a ferric phosphate compound which, uh, which is used as anodic inhibitor. Uh, it forms a protective layer on the anodic part and thus act as a barrier and prevent the surface of the iron to come in contact with the oxygen or other impurities. Secondly, the next on the right hand side it is shown cathodic inhibitor. Some substances which act as cathodic inhibitor they prevent they, uh, the cathode to from reduction reaction. As we have seen the example for chromate the anodic, anodic, anodic inhibitor is functioned by oxidizing ferrous or hydroxide to gamma Fe2O3 and this reduced chromate is incorporated into the protective film or the oxide film and the total film consists of 75% Fe2O3 that is the oxide and 25% Cr2O3 that is chromic oxide. Second cathodic inhibitor. Cathodic inhibitor decreases or act by reduction of cathode by forming an insoluble compounds which precipitates on the cathodic side. Now there are two types of reactions in acidic solution and neutral uh, re, uh, acidic reaction, neutral reaction. In case of acidic solution, the diffusion of hydrogen ions takes place. Thus, when cathodic inhibitor is added, it forms an insoluble compound and precipitate on the cathode and stops the diffusion of hydrogen ion, H plus ion and slows down. In case of neutral solution, diffusion of oxygen takes place. Therefore, when cathodic inhibitor is added, the diffusion of oxygen is retarded. As shown in this example, again on cathode, cathodic inhibitor and anodic inhibitor is shown. Third type of inhibitor, organic inhibitor. Organic corrosion inhibitors are such type of inhibitors which have a typical surface active agents. 
due to the presence of hydrophilic and hydrophobic moieties within the same molecule as shown in this picture the black head is your polar head group or uh, hydro uh, hydrophilic group and the long chain is the hydrocarbon chain different types of organic inhibitors which are used are amines carboxyl group thiourea phosphonates benzoate antimony trichloride all these compounds act as on uh, organic inhibitors and uh, forms a protective film on the uh, surface of the metal in this way as shown in this picture the polar head group uh, attached to the surface of the metal and stick there adheres there where the hydrocarbon chain the long hydrocarbon chain prevents the oxygen and uh, other impurities from the environment to come in contact direct contact with the metal surface let us see what are the different mode of action of these in the, uh, in, uh, corrosion inhibitors the first mode of action is through by adsorption of particular inhibitor compound for example amines thiourea antimony trichloride benzoate these four types of uh, compounds act by adsorption process then next is passivating passivating means decreasing the uh, particular metal surface or the what, uh, whatever the reactivity of metal surface uh, is there it is decreased by incorporating the inhibitors nitrate uh, chromate red lead calcium plum plumbate etc second uh, thirdly it is by forming a surface layer in case of phosphate silicate hydroxide bicarbonate hexametaphosphate all these type of uh, compounds form a surface layer and a layer on the surface of the metal next how we can pro uh, protect uh, prevent uh, corrosion of metals is by modifying the property of metal corrosion resistance can be increased by alloying them with suitable elements the alloyed metal from forms an adherent on non porous film on the metal surface example we have seen steel uh, in steel chromium is best suitable and act as corro uh, corrosion resistance for iron and steel because it forms a self healing oxide film once it is forms on the surface of the uh, uh, iron or steel and if there is any crack or pores chromium act as a self healing oxide it will again form an oxide film by reacting with the uh, oxygen or atmospheric uh, moisture etc and forms again an oxide film which forms a protective barrier on the surface of iron or steel another method which uh, by using different protective coatings surface coatings are generally applied on the surface of metal which resist corrosion most of the metals are corroded due to the environment effect therefore in order to avoid direct contact of metal with its environment we use different types of protective coating on the surface of the metal the corrosion resistant coating uh, material uh, should have characteristics for example they must be chemically inert to the environment under the condition of temperature and pressure and they should be applied to well clean and pre uh, pre treated surface of material to be protected so different types of coatings which we can use to prevent corrosion let us see one by one first one metallic coating in metallic coating we uh, there is hot dipping process metal cladding sheridizing electroplating second type of coating is non metallic coating which can be uh, done by, uh, with the help of compounds such as chromate phosphate porcelain etc and the third type of coating which we can use is organic coating for example paints varnish lacquers and enamels let us see hot dipping process in hot dipping process the metals uh, can be coated mechanically by dipping them in the bath of molten metal whose coating is to be made the melting point of the protective coating uh, means the metal to be coated should be lower than the melting point of the base metal the hot dipping is done in the bath of metals having low melting point for example lead tin zinc or aluminum 
there are two different uh, types of uh, hot dipping process one is galvanizing process and another one is steaming process which we will see here in the galvanizing process uh, the there is a coating of zinc on the iron articles which provides a tough and metallurgical bond between the zinc and iron surface or steel surface and it seals the uh, steel surface from the environment corrosive action zinc acts as a sacrificial action or cathodic protects the steel even where damage or a minor discontinuity occurs in the coating when a coating of zinc is applied on the steel surface or iron surface it acts uh, act as a sacrificial anode sacrificial anode means what uh, the firstly the corrosion was uh, to be taken on the surface of steel but when a zinc coating is applied zinc behave as anode and steel becomes cathode therefore zinc is called as sacrificial cathode or uh, sacrificial action what are the uh, different steps in galvanizing first one degreasing firstly the iron sheet or the steel sheet is clean by removing the organic contaminants such as dirt markings grease and oil from the metal surface then pickling process the scale and rust which are normally removed from the steel surface by pickling by dipping it in a dilute solution of hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid will dissolve the all scales and rust deposited over the surface of steel as shown in this uh, image the first step is caustic cle uh, cleansing which we call as uh, which we are pickling then rinsing again pickling rinsing in rinsing we remove the acid and iron salt extra amount of iron salt fourth one is fluxing the liquid flux which you uh, which is usually a zinc ammonium chloride solution it removes the oxides and prevents oxidation prior to dipping in the bath of molten zinc and the next step is galvanizing a bath consisting of a minimum 99.9% of pure molten zinc in which this steel cleaned steel articles are dipped as shown in this image next is staining process it is a process of coating of tin first the sheet of steel is cleaned by dilute acid and to remove this is to remove the oxide film and the other impurities then this particular sheet 